Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Luciana De Silva with Kinetics USA. It is Friday, that time of the week, time for our Onwards and Upwards show. Everything a global nurse needs to know to live and prosper in the United States. We have a fantastic show for you today. We are focusing on Pennsylvania, what it is like to live and work as an international healthcare worker in the state of Pennsylvania. Now, just for you to remember, if you do want to come and live and work in the United States, please go to our website, kineticsusa.com forward slash apply, fill out an application and we can get you started on your journey. Today's show, we have some wonderful guests from Pennsylvania joining us. Let's, let's meet our um, guests right now. We have Michelle Cody. Hi, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Good. We're so glad that both of you are able to meet with us today. Um, let's do some introductions. Michelle, please introduce yourself to our audience. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Michelle. I'm a registered nurse here in Pennsylvania. I work for Sabre Healthcare Group as a regional director of clinical services, and I love it. Hi guys, my name's uh, my name's Cody Meenan. Um, I am a divisional vice president. Uh, so what that means is I essentially oversee the operations for um, all 24 of our skilled nursing centers in Pennsylvania, one in Delaware, um, as well as we have a new acquisition coming on sometime this summer. Um, which I will also oversee. So I'm more operations. Michelle works um, on the clinical side of things. But um, very nice to see you guys. Wonderful. Yes. And, and both of our guests today are from Sabre Health. Michelle, give us a little bit of background on Sabre just so that our audience knows where you're from. Sabre is a great company. Um, they're based out of Ohio. They do have a number of buildings here in Pennsylvania. Um, very supportive. This is probably the first company I've worked with that I felt supported from every level. I know, you know, as a DON, when I was a DON with Sabre, I knew my regionals. My regional nurses were in the building all the time. Cody was actually um, my regional um, vice president of operations at the time. So we got to know each other well in that time. I, I just love working for Sabre. They're a great company. And Cody, tell us, what does Sabre focus on? What, what type of um, healthcare workers do you recruit? Quality. Um, you know, I mean, we, we, do, um, we do skilled nursing. Um, so, so in other words, um, for, um, for clinicians, we need RNs, LPNs, and CNAs. Um, so yeah, so, you know, that's, that's kind of, and then, and then, you know, we're always looking and we're always hiring. We always want the best quality people. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we're mostly skilled nursing. Skilled nursing, allied health care. We're so glad to have both of you here. Now, for everyone in the chat, please put in your questions about Pennsylvania, about Saber Health. Our guests are here to answer, the, to answer them for you and help you get started in your journey here in the United States. Also, please put in the chat your name, where you're from. We would like to give you a shout out here. I see that um, Fushene is saying hello and is an RN from Ga from Ghana. Uh, Gladstone is asking, how can I apply? Well, Gladstone, you can go to our website, kineticsusa.com forward slash apply and fill out our application. Our recruiters are waiting to speak with you and place you with the healthcare facility here in the United States. We also have Zofika from Dubai saying hello. Faisal is saying hi from Kashmir, India. Ezrael is saying uh, hello. I'm an RN from Belize. We have people from all over the world joining us today. So we're very, very excited. Let's get started. I want to start with Michelle here. Tell us about where you live. What city do you live in? And uh, tell us about what it's like to live there. So I live in a very small town. Um, it's called Tremont. It's very rural. We often joke that there's more cows than people in this area, which is most of the time true. Um, 
we are very close to bigger cities, bigger metropolises. The good thing about living in this area is everybody knows everybody. We're family here. So a lot of the residents that we take care of in our facilities, we grew up with. I, um, I recently took care of a teacher that, that taught me algebra in high school. Um, so it's, it's great to see and to have that connection before the residents come in and, and it, it ups your game. It ups that quality of care that you want to give. Um, but the area is great. Um, I always say too, that we're never more than two hours away from, you know, big city life. Um, two hours away from Philadelphia, half an hour drive from Harrisburg, the state capital. Um, there's a big town about 20 minutes from here that it's America's oldest beer brewery. So if you're into beer and you like to take free tours, they have a great tour. Love the beer tours. And it's five o'clock somewhere that's somewhere on the other side of the world. So if you're uh, drinking a beer right now and getting ready to go to bed, cheers to you. Uh, we also have two international nurses joining us as well. Kinetics nurses who also live in Pennsylvania. Uh, let's start out with Stella. Please introduce yourself to our audience. Well, um, Stella, I'm from Nigeria. I'm one of the international nurses working at Penn State Health. I moved to United States last year, November, and I'm living in Pennsylvania. Where in Pennsylvania are you? Camp Hill. Camp Hill, okay. Well, we're talking about some smaller cities here. That's, that's just wonderful so that our audience can get an idea of all the places to live in Pennsylvania. There's the big cities and the small towns. Rashimi, uh, please introduce yourself to our audience. You're on mute. Oh, it's so good. Hi, Hello. this is Rashmi, US Aryan. I have just arrived in uh, Pennsylvania just two months ago. And uh, I, was a I was previously working in Nepal as a registered nurse. Yeah. New and arrivals. Been, yeah, Pennsylvania. So new arrivals coming here. That's yeah. wonderful. Cody, back to you. Tell us about where you live in, in Pennsylvania and how long have you lived there? Um, I've I've lived my whole life in Pennsylvania. Um and it's a very it's a big state and it's a very unique state. Um so I grew up in a place called Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, um, which is a which is a really small town. Um, I live in a I live in Johnstown, Pennsylvania now, which is probably ninety minutes outside of Pittsburgh. Um, I do spend a lot of time in the Philadelphia market because we have um, a very big cluster of uh, skilled nursing facilities in the Philly in the Philadelphia market. I spend a lot of time in the Scranton market. Um, so Pennsylvania kind of gives you that flexibility of, you know, you can live in major U.S. cities. We have Pittsburgh and we have Philadelphia. Um, but you could also live if you're more comfortable in a rural environment. Um, we have plenty of, of rural environments too. Pennsylvania is a huge state. So, you know, it's a six and a half hour drive, seven hour drive, depending on where you're at from one end of the state to the other. Um, so you can live any way that you really want to. And frankly, speaking for uh, Michelle and I's organization at Sabre, we have skilled nursing facilities in all different lifestyles, major cities, small towns, anything in between. And Stella, tell us a little bit about when you arrived in Pennsylvania. But let's back up a little bit. Why did you decide to come to the United States and work as a nurse? Oh, that is a very interesting question. Well, before I migrated to the United States, I've heard so much about life in the United States. So many social amenities that we are not able to enjoy in Nigeria. So, and I visited United States a couple of times and I get to witness that all that I had was actually true. Then I started making plans on how I could be able to relocate with my family 
and live here as a legal resident nurse in here in the United States. And you came with your children too. We hear some little ones in the background. We love those sounds. <laughs> yeah. And we'll get more into that later on in the show of what it's like to bring your kids to the United States as an immigrant, as a nurse. Rashimi, tell us, why did you decide to come to the United States and work? Well, uh, I had always dreamed about working as a registered nurse in foreign countries once I got passed out from my uh, nursing. Uh, I started digging up the, if, uh, some of the information regarding NCLEX, regarding uh, PT, many more. And what I found most feasible for me is NCLEX because it is most uh, secure one. You can get direct visa, uh, direct green card. Uh, so uh, I was more drawn, uh, more I got interest in that. So that that's the time when I decided, okay, this uh, may be the most good for my co uh, career and my future as well. So I decided that time, uh, yeah. And you, you took the NCLEX exam and you said the PTE for the English exam? Yeah, what I was, was looking for IELTS and many more. Uh, but uh, most, uh, what I felt uh, is uh, NCLEX is the most secure one. Absolutely. Now, if you would like to work as an RN in the United yeah. States, let's bring up our success path if we can. So you can see that the first step is actually to pass your NCLEX. So whenever you take that test and you pass, that's the board exam to practice as a registered nurse here in the United States, uh, then we start preparing you for an interview and we connect you directly with a healthcare facility like Sabre Health. And then um, you can go through your English exams, as Rashimi said, the PTE exam, the IELTS or the OET. Uh, and then we go through the immigration phase, we get you your green card. And then you come to the United States with your onboarding, your training in a place like Pennsylvania. And it's time to enjoy and prosper. So if you know a nurse with NCLEX, we're offering $1,000 right now. If you refer a nurse with NCLEX, to Kinetics, all you have to do is also go to our website. You can click on referral or go to kineticsusa.com forward slash referral, and we'll get ready to get all of your friends and family started. Uh, so I would actually like to go back to Michelle. Tell us a little bit more that you were born and raised in Pennsylvania from what you told me earlier. What was it like to grow up in Pennsylvania as a child? It was wonderful. Um, and I'm not sugarcoating anything. I, I really enjoyed my childhood. Like I said, everybody knew everybody. It's kind of one of those idyllic towns where when the porch lights came on at, at dusk, you needed to be back in the house or all the neighbors were going to be out yelling at you to get back to house, back to the house for supper. Um, my cousins lived right down the street. My aunts lived right down the street. My grandmother used to watch us. It's just a very laid back lifestyle. But if you still want that excitement, you know, it, it, like I said, it's just a short drive to a big city. And my kids have grown up here. You know, they're kind of starting to fly away. Um, they're at school right now. So, but they come back. All my friends that I graduated with high school with we always talked about getting out of Pennsylvania and getting out of this small town life. But in the end, when it came down to settle down and start our own families, we all kind of came back to this area. That neighborhood watch, that community. And that's something that's so special, um, especially in a place like Pennsylvania and the smaller cities too. Everybody's that much more that much more connected. Cody, tell us about the area that you live. What is transportation like there? Um, well, uh, we have, there's all different types. It's, it's hard to explain. I mean, it just depends on where you live too. I mean, the access to transportation where I live now, which is um, Johnstown, Pennsylvania is a, 
a smaller city, I would call it. Um, you know, uh, but we have public transportation. So um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, buses that are around at all times to take you all across the city. Um, we have taxis everywhere. We have Ubers everywhere. Um, but getting around, um, to me, whether you're in a, a, in a smaller city or a major city, um, I never really have a problem um, getting around. And I spend a lot of time in, in both environments. And it's important, like, uh, like you were mentioning, too, although there you know, may be trains and taxis and Uber and Lyft, in the United States, it seems it's very important to have a car. You need a car to get from point A to point B. Stella, have you and your family, have you bought a car yet? What kind of transportation are you taking around where you live? I was making use of Uber to go to work. And a lot of friends helped me, like friends that I already made during my first time working here. I. I will always tell them that I'm having challenges of coming to work. They always volunteer. And one of the nurse leader, one of the nurse leaders volunteered to help me as well. Because the bus routing was was not favorable because of the timing that I have to be at work. So I resorted using this uh, Uber. Then sometimes she will always volunteer to help me to come to work. But now we have our own car and my husband have been the one bringing me to the hospital because I would need to have a Pennsylvania driving, driver's license before I could be able to drive to work, which he was the first one to have gotten that. Wonderful that now your family has a car. And that story that you just told about someone in your facility, someone that you work with that was reaching out to help you. And it, we see that over and over again with our clients at Kinetics, that there's the community, once again, that's able to reach out and, and help one another. Rashimi, what about you? How are you getting around? Uh I haven't uh, far going around. I'm just using Uber and Lyft app. Uh, I haven't got my driver license yet. I, I need to go. I need to go through the driving classes. So uh, what I do is just book uh, Uber or Lyft and go around. Yeah, I need to get used to it because I'm just new and uh, I have seen a couple of times boss, uh, so, uh, some of the boss take a tour, but I don't know uh, it's, a, it's a route. So uh, most feasible for me is just the app that I'm using it. Everything in the United States is connected to that technology. Yeah. That you can, <laughs> everything, right? You want to order a cup of coffee at Starbucks, you do it on an app and you go pick it up. You want a ride, you do it on an app, then you go and, and the ride comes pick, and picks you up. So, Rishimi, you just arrived. What are your thoughts? I really want to know. You just got to the United States. What, what's it like for you? Like um, it's uh, like it's like most of the like you get most of uh, different kinds of feelings. You get confused uh, because of the policies here. As I'm from Nepal, and the, the policy we follow there, and uh, it's totally different here. Every rules and regulation is totally different. Uh, the first thing that I was amazed was uh, I could not see people around, you know. Uh, the city was quite, I could not see people. It's totally departed. I could see uh, in Nepal, what happened is uh, uh, you see people, so uh, people everywhere and people travel here by their personal vehicle. And uh, when I went for a walk uh, with my husband, uh, we were two. We two were only walking on the street. <laughs> that was quite different feeling, uh, and uh, yeah, and and technology. I must say, is more advanced than it. Yeah, 
it's a mixed feeling, you know. <laughs> Getting into that technology topic, Michelle, I want to ask you about this. Let's get into the clinical side a little bit. Tell us about the technology in your facilities. What can nurses and allied healthcare workers expect when they arrive? So being in long-term care, we've We've transitioned from paper everything to now we use a lot of technology. We pass our medications with a computer system. We do our charting with a computer system. Um, we do a lot of things on our computers and with that technology. But the good thing about it is it's so it's easier user friendly. You know, we've had the 18 year old 19 year old nurses come in and, and they have no problem and then we have those nurses that are tenured with us who are maybe just a little bit shy of retirement age and they have no problem using it of course nobody likes change at first but once you get comfortable with it it the system that we use is really very user friendly so it's easy for anybody to learn for everybody to get used to. Cody, tell us a little bit more about that technology. And you know, you work with so many different facilities within Sabre Healthcare. So how do they differ and what can people expect? Um, well, first, that's the kind of the nice thing about working for, um, you know, we're a bigger company. Um, we, in, in, in the US, I mean, a lot of skilled facilities there's a lot of really small companies and that can get a little bit confusing, um, you know, but we have 126 nursing homes across seven states. So um, our um, information technology department and the people that can help you get through those things, because um, even here, I mean, there's a lot of people that are unfamiliar or, you know, new systems that we have, um, you know, they need trained and everything. So. Um, I think that the, the, the bringing people up to speed with our technology um, will not be a problem because, again, we try to keep things uniform across the entire portfolio. So you're always going to be working on kind of the same thing. We're, and right now, to be honest with you, um, and this is exciting, it's quite an undertaking, uh, but it is exciting. We, we're undertaking a, a change in our entire um, electronic medical records system. Um, so we're going to be moving to a new system here at some point in the summer, um, which is which is really going to be difficult, um, but um, it'll be more user friendly. It'll be better for the patients, better for the nurses, all that good stuff. But again, robust training, um, hand over hand training. Um, we have a, a huge department that way that is extremely knowledgeable and helpful. So um it I, what I would say is don't be uh, intimidated by it because you know there'll be a lot of help along the way. Seems like people from all over the world are commenting and asking about Pennsylvania and life here. Ahmed is saying hello from the UAE. Joyce is saying hi. Yannick is an RN in Jamaica. Azrael is asking what are your requirements for hiring? Well, uh, Azmir, it depends on. What is your specialty? Are you an allied healthcare worker? Do you do long-term care with nursing homes? Are you an RN? Are you? Uh, do you have a specialty of um, OBGYN or maybe emergency room? All of those different um, positions also have different requirements. Now, if you want to be an RN, you need to have your NCLEX exam. If you don't, that's okay. Still apply. We have partners that offer an NCLEX scholarship that also work with AMN Healthcare, who is our the owner of Kinetics USA. Um, so please apply, connectusa.com forward slash apply, and we can get you going on um, getting hired with a healthcare facility here. Anmar is saying, hello, everyone. What is the difference between federal tax and state tax, and how much is the tax rate in Penn State? Well, Amar, I will tell you that the difference between federal and state tax is federal means it's for the entire country uh, nationwide, and state tax is the 
taxes that are just from your state. Now, if you want some more information on that, we can reach out to a financial advisor. We also do shows here about taxes in the United States. So make sure you go to our website and you can get some information um, from some shows that we've done with experts that talk about that. Basra or Barsa is saying, thank you, Kinetics. I got my GC visa, my green card visa, and I can't wait to work as a USRN. Yay! Great to always hear about the new green cards and that you're on your way. Uh, let's see. Then we have Arthur. How can I apply for a license endorsement in Pennsylvania? Do I need an agency for that or have to do it personally? Any advice? Well, whenever you apply with Kinetics USA, we help you with your license endorsements. We will help you and guide you through that entire process. So no worries. Barbara can't wait to be accepted in the program. Ali is saying, I need a job of medical assistant. Please help me. We do have allied healthcare uh, facilities and medical assistant um, clients who are looking for people in your specialty. So please apply. And Barbara is saying, um, applied three weeks ago in Germany, saying hello. Let's get back to these questions now. Stella, what was it like your first day of work? You're on mute. Yes. Okay. I would say that I felt this breeze of warmness. I was welcomed with embrace from one of the not leaders with I told you that helped me with transportation and the community was so welcoming and I got to meet with the nurse manager which told me the things that I will be seeing moving forward with Penn State. Not only that their staffs are also welcoming. I get to meet a lot of them on that day so I didn't I don't feel the the culture shock and the work environment shock that I expected. I was kind of adapted easily with them. Culture shock is a real thing. And it is something that people talk about. Some people don't believe that it exists. And there is culture shock. Rashimi, are you dealing with culture shock at all? What's that like for you? Yeah, I... I had a culture shock before, but uh, now I'm getting used to it. I was quite overwhelmed with the uh, system here and policies here. I was unaware about most of the thing, uh, especially the human resources thing. And now I'm getting used to it. Uh, culture shock is like, uh, it, it makes you very much depressed sometimes, but I could get over it by talking to my family members, friends. So, yeah. It's just to keep that community around you to help you through that. Stella, you were saying about culture shock. Let's go back to you. What was that like for you? Well, it means a lot to me because I had so much before I located here. I had that I will get to see a lot of racism from different nationalities. Uh, but it was quite different from what I've been experiencing so far. Although I had already made up my mind towards that, that definitely that I was gonna see, experience a lot of culture shock here and there, but I was hopeful and what I saw in return wasn't the way I expected it. I quite a, like adjusted real fast. And I'm also, I'm also using my family to get, I mean, to like relieve it whenever it comes to me. Yeah. How are your kids adjusting with the culture shock? Um, you know, I I could remember one day my first son came back. He was crying. He was like, "Mom, that the that make that teasing him, that making jest of him, that he doesn't speak the way they speak." But now he told me that he can hear everything and he's not speaking like them, but not very frankly the way they speak. 
but generally they love they love the system here they love and they adapted more than me and my husband <laughs> it's funny kids are so resilient and the way that they can pick up on language and and adjust yes. it's a beautiful thing it really is yeah and michelle you also mentioned that you have kids and and that you know they they're growing up as well in pennsylvania tell us a little bit about what their life is like there how are the schools what do they do for fun so the schools in in my area um they're smaller schools. Um, my daughter graduated, I think, with 100 people in her graduating class. And that's opposed to a bigger city that's close to us where they graduate with 500 students. So they enjoyed that smaller class size. They got to know their friends. You know, they grew up with their friends from preschool all the way through graduation. Some of them go to the same college now. Um, I think they really enjoyed that small town atmosphere and it and even though it was a small town they weren't missing out on a good quality education they still got all of the things that the big schools got um, they just got it on a smaller scale so i mean i would hope they would say that they really liked it they probably just didn't like school in general <laughs> That's pretty normal for a kid, right? That's why they wait for that summer vacation mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they can just go wild <laughs> and have so much fun there. Uh, Cody, let's go back to you for a moment to talk about what it is like living in Pennsylvania. You've lived all over the state now. There's a lot of history in Pennsylvania. Tell us a little bit about what people can expect historically speaking when they go around all the different places. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Philadelphia um, is, uh, you know, one of the first major meeting places for the foundation of the United States. So, um, you know, going back into the uh, 1700s, I mean, there's a lot of, of historical artifacts and um, architecture and um, all that kind of stuff in Philadelphia, but it goes beyond Philadelphia too. I mean, Pittsburgh is a very historical city. Um, that's been a major city um, in the development. There's three rivers in Pittsburgh that made it a very valuable port city um, as the United States developed. Um, you know, so that's always been a very important place in this country. Um, and then beyond that, in um, in rural Pennsylvania, um, there's a lots of sights and sounds to see everywhere, um, both from a from a landscape perspective um, and from a from a historical perspective. Um, and I know that Michelle spoke on this before, but I do think the 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 really unique the unique thing about us like where we live and again traveling around and growing up in the united states and um spending my time the majority of which in pa i mean it's cool that um you know i grew up in the woods i mean you know i, I grew up in a rural town but i went to you know 10 or 15 professional sports games a year uh, because it's so uh, local. So you can live kind of however you want in any way. And Pennsylvania is a big state. And like you were saying, there's there's everything there. There are rivers. Mm -hmm. So if you like water sports, if you like to go hiking, um, and then there are all those sites that Cody just mentioned. Rashimi, where have you been in Pennsylvania? Have you had a chance to do any roaming around? To be honest, I haven't been to most of the place. The only place that I have been to is Pagoda. Uh, it was uh, like in the hilly, you can say in the hill. On top of it, you can see the beautiful scenario of the whole city. Uh, I haven't been got chance actually. There's so many places to go. The United States is so big that you can spend forever, your whole life exploring. Stella, what have you and your family been doing for fun? Have you done any travels? Mm, yeah, I think um, it was last week. We we went to Maryland for a friend's birthday party. And we stayed there just one night. 
and it was fun and i really enjoyed it for the fact that i could actually be in maryland in less than in less than two hours was a very big thing for me that was that transportation piece that we were talking about earlier. How did you get to Maryland? Did you take a train? Because there are trains in that area of the country, too, that you can go from city to city all over the East Coast. Uh, we made use of our own vehicle. Uh, my husband drove us to Maryland. Yeah, we did it on our own. Use that new car. You saw the countryside, huh? Yeah. yeah. That's the beauty, too, is that uh, when you have your own car, there's nothing like a road trip. Yes. You get in the car, you hit the highway, and you can just tell us about that. What's it like driving? Well, actually, um, I told my husband the day that he bought the car. I actually told him that, see, that I consider myself as the, as I consider that day to be the, the day I entered the United States because not having a car to move around, not exploring the town, you will not get to enjoy the beauty of the city, and which was actually one of the things that I've been enjoying so far after he was able to purchase the car. So we've been going out and most times is usually on maybe going for breakfast or lunch sometimes we do dinner outside on one of the restaurants chinese restaurants in camp camp hill so that's basically what um the laws i don't i will not consider i will not consider it the laws is a necessity that's one beauty of one beauty thing that you get when you have a car of your own you don't get to think about how much you pay for Uber to drive you around. You don't think about how you be on a cold weather because we moved here during the winter period and it was quite chilly outside. So whenever we're in the car, we get to turn on the heater and you will not feel the, 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 the warm, we will not feel the climate and the winter and all that. The climate, it can get a little cold in Pennsylvania. Michelle, the Pennsylvania veteran, what can nurses expect whenever they arrive there weather-wise? So we do experience all four seasons. Um, this winter actually was a little bit more mild than what we're used to. We, you know, typically we get a lot of snow. Um, the temperatures really do plummet in the winter time. And then we look forward to spring when the, the tulips start coming up and the crocuses and you can hang up that winter jacket, and maybe just go around with a sweatshirt. Although the last couple of weeks, the weather's been in like the high 50s, low 60s for a little bit. So that's been a change. Um, fall is beautiful here. The leaves all change color and it's just breathtaking to drive you know, on back roads. So I recommend to you ladies to just get out and just drive along the back roads in the fall, especially because it's just absolutely beautiful to drive in the fall. Four full seasons. You have the warm summers, the beautiful springs, the falls with the amazing leaves, and then you can make snow angels and have a white Christmas. So it seems like it's just the best of all the, all the worlds there. Cody, let's talk, um, let's go a little bit more back to the transportation. You know, um, Stella was mentioning that she's really close to Maryland and that it only took two hours to get to Maryland. What is it like to be in Pennsylvania? Tell us about the surrounding areas, the other states people can go to as well. As you can see, we have a, a map of Pennsylvania here. Yeah, I actually, um, I went to graduate school in West Virginia. Um, so I'm, I'm very familiar with that area of the world. West Virginia, again, a beautiful, beautiful state. That's more of a, a very rural, uh, mountainous state. Um, but again, skiing, exploring, hiking, that kind of stuff. Um, Maryland, we're actually pretty close to Washington, D.C., which is the nation's capital. Um which has everything you could possibly imagine to see. Um, depending on where you're at, if you're in the, the northeast of Pennsylvania, the Scranton market, um, you know, you're pretty close to, you know, New York City. 
um, and some other major cities, Boston, New York City, that whole thing. So again, depending on where you're at, I mean, you know, because Pennsylvania is so big, um, you know, if you're in Erie, which is the northwest of PA, you're really close to, to Cleveland, Ohio. Um, you know, so it really just kind of depends on 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 where you uh, on where you end up. But either way, no matter where you're at, you also have access to um, other major cities outside of PA. Let's bring that map back up of Pennsylvania. As you can see on the northwest, or sorry, the, the yeah, the northwestern corner there, Lake Erie. That's one of the Great Lakes, is that not, Cody? Yep. Yes, it is. Tell us a little bit about that area. Uh, it's beautiful. It just depends on, um, you know, there's there's really good universities up in up in Erie. Um, those Great Lakes, um, there's five of them. Um, they span that whole area across the Midwest. Um, and a lot of people, you know, a lot of people like to go up there and vacation and shop and kind of and kind of do all that thing, too. But um, very nice, very cool stuff. In the United States, we have a saying, hop, skip, and a jump. So it seems like right there on that northwestern part, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump over Lake Erie, and you're in Canada. <laughs> you really are right there in the center of all of it. So it's really, really great area to explore. Let's talk about fun in Pennsylvania. I want to start with, I always think that fun has to do with food in so many ways. Rashimi, tell us about the food in Pennsylvania where you live. What have you tried? What do you love the most? <laughs> I haven't tried. Uh, once uh, I went with Rich, uh, Rich is our license official. I went with him in the restaurant and I don't know the many dishes actually. We went into the, into the stick house. Uh, I can't remember the dish name, but it was quite good, I must say. I, uh, and uh, the most the dish that I like most is uh, chick, uh, uh, chicken nuggets. Uh, we can find it easily on uh, Chick fil A. I have been there a couple of times. Uh, I would suggest that one. <laughs> Chick-fil-A. So for yeah. everybody walking around the world, Chick-fil-A yeah. is a fast food restaurant. You know, there's McDonald's, Burger King, KFC in the United States. The number one is called Chick-fil-A. And there are actually studies about that, apparently. It's always voted number one. And they do nothing but like fried chicken and fried chicken sandwiches and fried chicken nuggets. So that's definitely a big part about American culture is our is our wonderful fast food and the fried chicken and the big Coca-Cola that comes with it. Stella, what about you? What kind of amazing foods have you tried in the United States and your family, too? Eating, yeah. apart from eating in a Chinese restaurant, I don't usually know. I don't usually know the name of the American food that I get to see. So I'm always comfortable with the Chinese food that I always go go out to eat because the food that I can't even say the name of food I had is not. I didn't see. It, I don't used to see it interesting yeah. to me. And not only that, I still have some food that I came back home with. I still have them in stock and I always make use of it. I eat it a lot. I don't usually like American food. I'll have to be honest. I don't know. I've not tested it. And okay, someone made me to, to test it the other day, but I said, no, I have to be frank to myself that I don't usually like it. I was having this conversation with a friend the other day of define food in America. What is American food? So, so many people will say, oh, it's the hamburger. But truly here in the United States, 
we have so many multicultural dishes that it's not just the hamburger that we have here. There's so many other types of foods that you can try. Michelle, tell us about the restaurants in your area and maybe even touch on what are some Pennsylvania classics of dishes that people could try. So in this area, we love Chick-fil-A. That is the best place to get chicken nuggets. If you get chicken nuggets from there, you will never get it from anywhere else. Um, because I live in a small town, we have the food we grew up on. It's more of like a Pennsylvania German food. So we eat a lot of chicken pot pie, which is most people call it chicken dunk dumplings, chicken and dumplings where other people are from. But for us, it's chicken pot pie. Um, we do lettuce with hot bacon dressing, which is phenomenal. Um, my husband and I are actually making halushki this weekend, which is cabbage and onions and some potatoes, and you mix it and fry it together. Um, we love pierogies, um, halupkis, which are pigs in a blanket, some people call them. It's just, it depends on what part of the state you go to. You know, if you go to Philadelphia, they're known for their cheesesteaks. You have to get a cheesesteak from Gino's. That's where everybody goes to get a cheesesteak. Um, up this way, it's the Pennsylvania Dutch food. Um, it's, and I'm not sure what it is out where Cody lives. I don't get out to that part of the state very often, <laughs> but they call it, they call soda pop out there. So they're a little weird out there sometimes. Um, but yeah, it depends on what part of the state you go to. Different counties have different traditions. Um, it's just, I would recommend trying a little bit of everything. Cody, what's the food like in all the different places that you've lived in Pennsylvania? And what do you recommend for uh, healthcare workers to try when they get there? Um, I think that's, uh, that's you, you hit the nail on the head is that um, food is very multicultural um in uh in pa uh, in pennsylvania we have um you know like i grew up i'm i'm actually polish i've come from polish ancestry so um that's kind of what i grew up eating different types of a um, lot of a lot of things that involve butter and onions and lots of salt um but it just depends on where you're at i mean there's different um different uh ethnicities um and different you know pockets of the state that kind of um, and you can see the the food kind of follows as such. Um, in Pittsburgh, there's a lot of um, what makes Pittsburgh unique, which no one's ever really seen. And I thought was normal growing up, but I guess is not, uh, is that uh, we put French fries on everything. So there's French fries on salads. Uh, there's French fries on sandwiches. Um and it turns out that's not really necessarily normal, but that is a that is a pretty uh, unique Southwest Pennsylvania thing. I don't know why, uh, but it is. If you order a steak salad um, in Southwest PA, it's going to come with French fries on it, um, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, it makes it kind of unique. It depends on it just depends on where you're at. But again, I think uh, the variety for me is. Um, is what makes it the most enjoyable because you can have whatever you want whenever you want. And that's like a lot of the United States, whatever you want, whenever you want it. And it's such a multicultural country for people to come to and, and live. Rashimi, on that note, what is the culture like where you live? When you got to work and you met your coworkers, there's someone here asking, uh, Amar is asking, can I ask Rashimi how was the first few days, which we talked about earlier, um, where she lived and how she arranged herself. So when you got to, to work, what were the people like? What are your coworkers like? Is it a cultural area? Um, oh, the first day of my work was like, I was very overwhelmed that time. Uh, I could see lots of people from different, actually, I don't know their ethnicity, their, uh, from which uh, country they are from, from which state they are from. I can't uh, really recognize them. Uh, for me, everywhere were like, uh, uh, 
very different for me uh okay i'm really for the thing that i felt is like okay this is it <laughs> i'm in the united states uh, uh, and the first uh, what i felt difficulty is they speak very fast english and i speak very slow english and i could not get uh, what they, what they are telling and even the medical terms they use is totally different from where i used to work before it is totally different and i had to like uh, question them multiple times okay what do you mean <laughs> can you please repeat again uh, now uh still i have a problem uh, for dealing with that different terminology so um i asked uh, my colleague uh, the um, the preceptor especially i asked uh, help from uh, from my preceptor and please teach me this and this is how you learn things uh, and the good part about is that they are very much helpful and they can understand you are from the different parts of the country and uh, you can get a difficulty in learning things so they uh, reach out to us uh, they tell uh, they question us if we are in trouble or not and they keep on uh, uh, helping us so this is uh, so uh, i'm feeling very much ha happy that my co-workers are very much supportive and i'm getting used to it yeah we absolutely love those stories and Stella also saying how her co-workers were very, very supportive uh, whenever she also arrived. Upon your arrival, Stella, I want to go back to you. How did you find housing? Did you come in and you are you renting now? Or did you where, where are you living? Tell us about it and how you found a home. Uh, first, when I arrived, actually, I didn't have anybody here living here, so uh, I had uh, I stayed in hotel for almost two, more than twenty days, and in the meantime, we were looking for the apartment, and thankfully, uh, one of uh, the nurse from um, Connectix only arrived in the same hotel, and we we talked with her and she had already found the apartment in the Wilson school lane so uh, from her contact only i uh, book i tried searching from the online i visited the apartment personally and i liked it very much and and um, i also found that this is the most uh, safest place like uh wilson school district is the safest place you can say where i live uh, and i liked uh, very much so uh, from that uh, only i uh, i um we had to apply appointment through uh online and fill up some of the uh, very much long um, forms i must say and uh, Mm, yeah, actually, my this booking things, I give uh, all the responsibility to my husband because I'm not good at uh, good with this. <laughs> and he took all the responsibilities and I finally in the apartment living, uh, living here. Yeah. It's so wonderful when you come with family even if you yeah. come alone it's great but if you have a spouse that's also coming with you if you have your kids coming with you it can be a little little more challenging perhaps but it seems like it's so much more rewarding and speaking of you were saying that you got your apartments stella tell us about i want to get into the cost of living a little bit we have some questions in the chat about that with your kids and your um you know your wonderful salary with your new job uh, your apartment give us an idea of how much do you think someone needs to live in pennsylvania just a you know basics how much does a hamburger cost um you know little give or take rent where you live tell us about it you're on mute there 
I think it depends on the the fast food that you're getting the hamburger. Uh, I think the the average should be around three to seven dollar or something because I'm not a fan of hamburger, but I know that it could cost pretty on that range. And for the cost of living is between 1400 and 1600 for two bedroom apartments in Camp Hill, especially in Camp Hill Plaza where I live is within the neighborhood of two, um, 1400 to 1500. What about school for your kids? Okay, uh, the school, I think, is basically you have to get an apartment before you will be you you will be selected on the school district where you your kids will go to. So that's one of the major things that we considered before we moved from the hotel to this apartment where we live. And we asked people around, and they told us that. Camp Hill has a very that they have their school that their school system is very very good. So we got in settled here before we we enrolled my my kids in school. And to enroll them is not quite challenging like I I thought it would be. It, you just have to have like their immunization record, their birth certificates, and all the information that they will ask you and your kids will be settled in school. Then you, you'll be shocked that you'll be provided with most of the materials that they will need for the school. Like they, uh, my kids, we are given mini laptops and some materials to, to, to start school. That's wonderful. So it's just, it's just given to you, um, just as part of their curriculum, it seems. Michelle, tell us about um, the schooling for kids. Is it free? Do you have to pay for it? How does that work? It all goes under that cost of living. So for the most part, it's we don't pay a monthly fee to go to school. We pay um, our income taxes, our school district taxes once a year. Um, and you pay that to the district that you live in and that's where your kids go to school. So there's no actual regular fee. It's a once a year type fee that we pay. And what about the cost of living in your area? Just some basics. Um, so a hamburger in this area will be anywhere between two and four dollars, depending on which, you know, restaurant, which um, fast food place you go to. So it's a little bit cheaper than um, the Camp Hill area because Camp Hill is a bigger area and, and they have more things there. Um, but I mean, I, I think it's comfortable um, for a nurse to live here, you know, in the specifically in the town I live in, you can rent a good apartment for anywhere between three to five hundred dollars a month. Um, when we bought our house, I think our mortgage was six hundred dollars a month. So. I mean, it's definitely doable. <laughs> See, there's, it's just amazing how the cost of living can change, whether if you're in a big city or a small town. I do believe we actually have a comparison on the cost of living here. That it's, it's showing that basically, you know, if, if we're looking at Harrisburg, Pennsylvania versus Los Angeles, Long Beach. Okay, so... And the cost of living is 49% higher in Los Angeles than in Pennsylvania. So it's so much more expensive to live in a place like Los Angeles. Look at here, Harrisburg versus New York City. New York City is 137% higher. The housing costs are 402% higher. So it seems that Pennsylvania is a very affordable place to live compared to so many other places in the United States, which is something that everybody needs to take into account. Uh, I have one more question. Let's take one more question from the chat here. Uh, Kenitra is asking, um, I want to know how safe Allentown, Pennsylvania e is, even though every state and city is 100% safe. Can I please know the crime rate, general safety? Thank you. Cody, I want to take this one to you, maybe not specifically Allentown, but talk about all the different places that, that you've lived and work and the safety there. 
I've spent time in Allentown. Um, I, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, um, I, I, to be honest with you, I, I never feel, um, there, there's nowhere that I feel, um, unsafe, whether it be Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, um, Scranton, anywhere in rural Pennsylvania. Um, there's nowhere that, that I, that I feel unsafe. Um, so you know, just like, um, living in anywhere, um, you know, I'm sure there's some times of night in some certain neighborhoods that, um, maybe would be a little bit more, um, avoidable than others. Um, but to be honest with you, I, I don't really, I've never felt that way. So in Allentown specifically is a lovely, um, small Pennsylvania city, um, that there's no reason to feel unsafe there. Allentown is a lovely little city. Cities in the United States are like cities all over the world. If you're in a big city, there's always going to be that area that might be a little more unsafe, maybe a you know a little crazier. Um, but all in all, it seems like Pennsylvania is a safe state, no matter where you're going. Um, let's get into final advice here. It seems like we're running out of time. I can't believe it already. Uh, Rashimi, if you could give one piece of advice to an allied healthcare worker, um, an RN that's sitting somewhere in South Korea watching this right now, what piece of advice could you give them about coming and working in the United States? Uh, like, I think uh, you have to be very much mentally strong. You must be mentally strong and prepare that I need to get through cultural shock. I hear our like uh, from getting and uh, getting from the Asian uh, country is totally different for us to get adjusted in the uh, the American society because uh, they are they have much more freedom. They have different rules. So uh, and even uh, with the work environment uh, they have different policies rules and regulations so uh, to get through it you have to be very much strong mentally and yeah that's it <laughs> Stella what about you one piece of advice that you could give our viewers who are coming to work in the United States and you have to be very oh, smart bye. You have to be very smart I'm with whatever you're doing. You got to get whatever they wanted to get across to them. And when you are preparing, oh, when, you're, <laughs> when you're preparing to come, you have to be a little patient, patient out with the immigration, so that you will not, so that you will not make, you will, you will not run into trouble. Make sure you get all the required paperwork that is needed of you then you also read your mails because all the communication that is being done here are completely well through mail email and the rest of them so you have to like be very up and doing to meet up with the fast-paced country that you're coming to and straight from Penn State, Al. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, but Michelle, give us last piece of advice here for nurses coming to the United States in Pennsylvania. Um, I would consider long-term care. There's so much nursing to do out there. Everybody thinks, you know, let's go to the hospital, let's do this. But Pennsylvania specifically has so many different opportunities in long-term care. Um, it's such a rewarding um, field to be in. You make relationships with your residents and your your fellow staff members. Um, and just give it a shot. You know, you're never going to know unless you try it. You never know until you try it. Cody, last piece of advice. I agree with Michelle. Um, I mean, long-term care, uh, it really does. Uh, I think, I think people watch uh, too much TV and think that everything is like being a, an ER nurse. Um, 
you know, and and that long term care actually allows um, a registered nurse or otherwise to kind of um, explore all of their skill set, um, their managerial skills, their clinical skills. Um, all of those things are kind of on display um, in long term care as opposed to other healthcare settings. So I do agree with Michelle that you should try us out. Thank you so much to Saver Healthcare uh, and to Michelle and Cody for joining us and telling us about Saver and about the wonderful state of Pennsylvania. Stella and Rashimi, welcome to the United States. We absolutely are here to help you prosper. And Kinetics, we are here for all the nurses all over the world to come and work in the United States. Our recruiters are waiting for you. Jump on our website, kineticsusa.com forward slash apply and get your American dream started. Thank you so much to all of our guests for joining us. We really appreciate it. And just to wrap up the show here, uh, let's talk about the future shows that we have coming up. So you can stay tuned for immigrating with kids to the United States. We just talked a little bit about that today, but we're going to go really into that topic next next week, uh, the April the 14th, budgeting for U.S. arrival. How much money do you need? How much does an apartment cost? We'll be talking about that on the 14th. On the 21st, we'll be doing a client showcase with UofL. Uh, they're also one of the healthcare facilities that works with Kinetics. So they'll be here to talk about what it's like to work at their facilities. Immigration Q&A on the 28th with our lawyer partners to answer all of your immigration questions. Then we're going to get into Nurses Month. May is Nurses Month. On the 5th, we're going to do a career day, a Kinetics career day, which actually Sabre Healthcare is going to be a part of. Speed dating for careers. You'll get to hear from many of our different clients and what they're looking for in the United States um, for their different positions that are available. Nurses Month game show on the 12th. We'll be giving out prizes all month, especially during this game show. So definitely tune in to have a chance to win our wonderful prizes. We'll be doing another immigration question and answer on the 19th. And on the 26th, we will be focusing on direct hire versus staffing. What are the differences between those two services? Of course, we do our once a month show, the LaFora Talk Show. And April the 11th, we'll be working on the, the next gen NCLEX, which is actually launching April 1st. There's a whole new NCLEX that have, that's come out and they've made all of these adjustments to the old test. So we're gonna give you all of that information and how to prepare. Finally, on May the 9th for the LaFora Talk Show, work-life balance. It's something that's so important in order to have a prosperous and a happy life here in the United States. Thank you again to all of our guests, and thank you so much to you at home joining in. And as we always say, onwards and upwards. Take care. Okay.